Welcome back to game three in this series between Team Liquid and Team Dignitas. Isaac, you might have said that Team Dignitas plays a lot of game threes at the beginning of this yeah. series. It seems we have reached that point. We have. <laughs> Dignitas, whether they're playing the best teams yeah. or the worst teams, they seem to go to a lot of game threes. I believe they have actually the most games played in the NALCS oh, this man. split. Uh, so they have had certainly a lot of long ones. And <laughs> it just seems to be that they have really high highs, but their lows are, are kind of lowered. It, or it's almost like they play to the level of their opponents. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the level of their opponents right now, uh, as you see Lorlo getting the heated up good wrist pads two. from Dardock, these guys are leveling up immensely right now. And yeah, <laughs> both of those, uh, the entire team really coming together a little bit more. I think I like what you said last time. It seems like they're having fun as yeah. they're playing up here. Well, you have nothing to lose. It's a little bit easier to play fun, but still they are really doing things that we expected to see from them all season long. I, I completely agree, and we're expecting big things from a lot of these players. Mm -hmm. Team Liquid is a team that has a lot of star power that has just never really seemed to come together in the last couple of years. Yeah. No matter who they have picked up, you know, Dardock was obviously a big star, is still a big star. Mm -hmm. Rainover, when they got that pickup, and Piglet and Mickey and all these guys who are big names, it has never really come together at the right times for their team, and they have been struggling for a couple of years now in the LCS. But I, th I think a lot of it can come down to attitude, to the mentality when you are in these games, because we know that a lot of the players have the skill, have the ability to perform at this level. But if you're under too much pressure, if you're stressing out too much, if yeah. you're panicking in these games, you're not going to be able to think straight. You're not going to be able to make all the correct decisions that you need to in a game of League of Legends. It's very easy to watch these guys be up there but you never really know how much yeah. pressure it is to actually be up there. So crazy. Definitely can be stressful to play in, in tournaments with all these people watching and uh, so much criticism yep. levied the way of players when they <laughs> do mess up. Ban phase one complete. Good bit of tanks in here with the Zac. They take someday Shen away and it looks like they want a bit of initiation for Lorla here on the top side. Still a Maokai in either of yeah. the first two That's games. Really good point. Which is really surprising. I still think it's such a strong pick, and to me, it's just straight up better than Gragas. But Gragas does offer more playmaking ability. It is kind of more explosive in its engages as far as yep. you know, having this ultimate that can throw out that displacement. But what Maokai brings is an enormous amount of consistency, an enormous amount of tankiness. Point and click crowd control is so strong yep. in this game. There's no outplaying a Twisted Advance from Maokai. There's no outplaying the, uh, the Arcane Smash after you're CC'd up. So yep. it gives you a lot of power there. And equally, the ultimate is also very powerful because it can be used similarly to how the Talia wall is used to zone people off turrets for this sort of disengaged tool as well. I love that you say that and I just think a bunch of cats coming at you. <laughs> it's so powerful. What will they decide? Those cats can be scary, man. They get their claws out. <laughs> Scratch the wrong cat's belly. They're a terrifying terrify freak. He hates cats. <laughs> Jarvan and Talia locked in Team Dignitas, keeping it quite similar. This would have been, I believe, a server if they do continue to go with the same lock-ins as the previous. Side of Team Liquid, Echo gets locked in here for Mickey. I like it. Unless Lorlo goes crazy this game and just wants to play AP top. I'd like that too. See what Mickey ends out this first phase of picks here with. Will they decide to grab their support? No, do it. Uh, I think he just wants it again. I mean, they, they won the Vayne in the last game. I think he's feeling it. They're going to lock Vayne again. Why not? When he locked it in, it was already against things that were going to grab him, pull him, lock him up. So it's, it's hey just man, a pick there's, at this there's point. There's no Blitzcrank just yet, at least. <laughs> awesome. We get to see Piglet back onto Vayne, having a fantastic game last time, just previously. I'm very excited to see what support they're going to try to pair alongside it. It's going to be the Jana taken away here for Adrian before it can be banned out. We did see bans thrown his way earlier in the series for this champion. And that means there is no AD carry alongside him just yet. So likely Team Liquid will be focusing the AD carry role, yep. I would expect. And we are probably going to be seeing Dignitas continue to focus Matt in these pick bans. Good lock in for the Jana. That may just mean it is a Lulu. That would be the utmost last support protection you can pretty get here unless you eat them up with tom kench tristana taken away i like it slows down dignitas's turret taking potential that just means the sivir more in the hands of all time i mean you could ban out the sivir too right I, I think that if you can take yes you could this guy off of 
one of the more kind of powerful Eleni champions, someone who can abuse the Vayne, mm -hmm. then maybe you can actually get something done there. Vayne also, though, was always considered in the past a good matchup into Sivir because of the dueling potential that Vayne has. If there's a force going to roam away, uh, you certainly can smash Sivir in a 1v1 as the Vayne. But it's going to come down to what they're most worried about. Ooh. They do not seem to be worried about that Sivir, so maybe trying to push yeah. him onto it. Twitch is also available, but I don't particularly think Twitch is a good matchup for Vayne either. I agree. What will it be on the side? They actually took away Matt's Bard. Interesting. They fear the Bard more than they feel Piglet being a little bit bigger there. And I would fear Matt's Bard as well. Would it be the Varus? He's going to lock in the Varus. A little more lockdown. Okay. You have a lot of potential when once that Cataclysm is in to get that Chain of Corruptions out to a lot of people. So it works. Well. I think it makes a lot of sense, right? This is much more of a safer bottom lane that they have drafted mm -hmm. for themselves. It's someone who does have longer range than the Vayne, who can poke out the Vayne, who can push out these waves. And like you call it out, the follow-up with that Chains of Corruption yeah. is quite strong too. CC is very, very valuable against the Vayne, but it is going to mean Matt will take the Lulu and the lulu Vayne combination is going to give him a lot more protection. So if yep. we do see Vayne get ahead, it certainly could be hard to shut him down with the Lulu in his back pocket. That would be so cool. Uh, I hope we see Vi. I can't even remember the last time we saw this. I do really, really like I like things like uh, Chain of Corruptions against Vayne because it's one of those uh, kind of like chaotic CC mm -hmm. where you're either going to get hit or you're going to move to get hit. And Vayne is primarily on that positioning. If she's not in short range, you're not getting shots. Chain of Corruption gets to bounce right at that range. It's always, well. it's always tough. You always got to work around some abilities, and they're going to be throwing a lot at Piglet. There you go, though, Azale. You got your tree. Maokai's in. Yeah, Maokai finally showing up here in the series. And, and while I do think that Vayne can be good against Frontline because you have the true damage, because you can shred these guys out, if the whole team is there in combination, Maokai can so easily set up the other CC mm -hmm. with, like we talked about, point and click, twisted advance. You W that Vayne, and that's going to put him right into an easy setup for the seismic shove, for the chains of corruption, for the flag and drag. So there's a lot of ways for them to lock down and take out Piglet on this Vayne, but if he can get ahead, certainly have the ability to take over a game. And Maokai is not a scary jungler in the early stages, so it will give some free reign for Lorlo and for Mickey and, and the bot lane to try to get advantages uh, before he gets yep. out there and starts ganking. All right, the coach is off to the back. They get to watch Fiddler Fingers and wish they were making the plays as they see everything from top down. It's up to the players now. Hashtag TL win, hashtag dig win. Who will be taking this final matchup? Dignitas looking to brush off any of the cobwebs and show a playoff form as they get towards that position. TL looking to put a stop to that and get the synergy with this team working right. We're about to head on to the Rift for game three. Let's see what we got here from Team Dignitas versus Team Liquid. We're about to be on to the Rift, and you are too. Gonna have to find out how well TL is gonna be able to pull off engages with the Gragas and this Gnar also, when you have a Maokai who can jump on you, mm -hmm. who can peel you out, when you have a Janna who can push you away and deny the entrance into that fight. So it may be very difficult. I mean, there are three essentially champions who are going to be diving from TL with the Echo, the Gragas, and the Gnar, and they can all just be shoved right out of the fight by the Janna, Janna Ultimate. Oh. Adrian Janna as well. You can... You almost, it's weird to say, but expect to see the plays, mm -hmm. the kind of the, the little outplays, if you will. Not the plays, the <laughs> outplays, because you're always on the receiving end of this engage. But he makes whoever he is defending very protected. Certainly does. And I will say, I think that Dignitas has pretty heavy advantage as far as straight up team fight, mm -hmm. unless TL can find these sort of wombo combos, unless they can find a great NAR. But where TL may be favored is the fact that, hey, you actually are setting yourself up pretty well for a 1-3-1 type composition. You could, theoretically, if, if Piglet gets fed, have him split pushing. That's true. Mickey can go up to a side lane. Gnar can be in a side lane. So there is a lot going from them there. One thing that does kind of worry me, though, for TL is if you fall behind, where is your consistent wave clear, right? There's not a lot. Yes, Echo can kind of trim down waves, but... When you have a fat front line, when you have good sieging you know, from this Varus, it can be tough to actually hold onto your turrets if you're on the back foot. 
fast clears to come in here from both mid laners. And a help on Raptors for Shrimp. Same thing coming on, obviously. Lore low to Dardock for his blue as they meet towards the top side. And you can see Mickey with that 10 and 8 on his Ari all time. 2017 season record for his Echo. 3 0. So feeling pretty good. Hopefully puts another one in the win column here for TL teammates. And Echo could be a very exciting champion. We definitely have some good Echo players in the NLCS, but not a lot who have been playing it recently. We know that Jensen has been known to show it. Bjergsen, even Hoogie bringing out uh, a fair bit of Echo in the past. So definitely we have seen a, a fair bit of the champion, just, just not recently. And we're gonna have to see exactly how many he wants to play it, how aggressive is he going to get? We did see him playing into the Talia in game number one with that Ari. And while he certainly had pressure on Keen in the lane, he was never able to kill him. He was never able to really convert that into much. And Keen withstood that pressure and then was much more effective in the later stages of the game. So can Mickey get that pressure? And if he does, what will it result in for Team Liquid? A little switch in masteries as well. You can see the potions for Mickey. Biscuits for Keen, and there's a bit of choice there. Nice three tap onto Keen, brings him down to half as he chews up the first biscuit. Looks like Dorian's corruption potion to the top side, so pretty much orthodox start for everybody around. Because we have the talismans in the jungle. You would say the Doran's shield is a little bit atypical for the Gnar, though. All right. A lot of people do like to go for the Doran's blade, kind of that more aggressive option, because you do have the ranged advantage, and you can sometimes True. get those trades out. But it may be a little bit worried about someday playing aggressive, because Jarvan can actually do fairly well into Gnar if you can play aggressively. And if you know where the jungler is, and you can actually hit him with the flag and drag, you can trade quite positively. And in combination with Maokai, you could get locked down and taken out. So he may just be more concerned about actually surviving in the early stages and getting to, say, his Black Cleaver before he starts to look to take over. Uh-oh, no push on the lane here for Keen. Shrimp might find Shrimp. himself in quite a pickle. He's good. He'll just be able to walk out. For a moment there, Mickey was starting to head down, but they never really crossed paths. So even on both sides, but at least they have the jungler knowledge. You might see lanes go a little bit harder here. Push up from Alltech and Adrian. He's just looking to get CS. They don't really have any engaged to hit. Kind of a funny little play from Shrimp. He's just kind of camping in the bush, just watching Dardock actually take the <laughs> camp and then just runs away. Not sure what he was really trying to accomplish there, but Dardock may look uh, to try to get a little bit aggressive now as he's moving over towards that Raptor camp. But the camp pretty much going to be cleared out before he actually arrives. Oh, I see you. Oh. Close vote. Close Raptor. Almost and got to take down. Still a lot of them out oh, there. Oh, yeah. With the confidence in their team, confidence that they are going to be able to you know, turn it around. Almost the counter gank towards the top side as the patiently wait once again. Remember, it's quite long for that first blood coming into game two. Could expect the same here in game three as we have a few lanes that want to charge up. And not much possibility for engaging on the bot side. I always kind of like to track how much players get in gold from their support items. And the fact mm -hmm. that Adrian went back for a super early Nomad's Talisman, he's going to be getting that 40 gold per coin very, very early in the game. He actually based well, all talk stayed around because he's prioritizing how much gold he's going to get from this. We'll see if he goes for, say, uh, something like a straight Arden Sensor Rush. We have seen this a little bit come out uh, in the LPL it was shown, even skipping Sightstone and, yeah. and things like this because of how much they're prioritizing uh, the gold income and how much they're prioritizing the, that Arden Sensor. The resources are disgusting too, because especially as a Janna, you're never going to run out of resources. Mm -hmm. You get mana, you get gold, you're perfectly fine. There you go. Picks it up when he needs it. That's another shield. He just yeah. used it. It's really strong. I mean, recently, I believe it was actually Biofrost I saw tweeting out about a mm -hmm. game he had in the LCS where he got 3,000 gold from the coin. <laughs> and you certainly can hit those marks. You can be at a couple thousand gold just from getting this early support item and, and keeping it very efficient. Back behind their caster wave. The only thing they have to hide behind at the moment. Altec's like, yeah, this is a good defense. And he's actually farming it out quite well. That's what he has to do to stay safe for now. 46 to 46. 
You can see the cleanup here. Garnock is there. Alltech might just walk into this. Means Alltech is up in CS, but down for first blood. Teleport coming in. Actually, a little late from Lorlo. He decides to stop it on the fountain. Now he's got a long walk back to lane, actually, as that fizzled out. And Summoner Sradrian. Yeah, that. nice play there. Alltech stepping forward, trying to delay the base, but Dardock had already snuck into the bush, and they're going to be able to find a pretty easy first blood. It was so close to going over to Piglet as well. Adrian's exhaust, yep. I think, reduced just enough damage on that last auto, plus Silverbolt's proc, to keep him uh, from actually getting that in. Yes, the exhaust does not actually reduce the damage on the silver bolt proc itself, but see it again. on the auto attack. So you see this last shot right there. He was looked like he was exhausted on, and the ignite does pick it up. Certainly would have liked it to go over to Piglet, but either way, I mean, they could be happy about how these lanes are going. They are playing around it, but that's yes. two games in a row. They get the advantage on the bot side against a bottom lane who has been very effective for Team Dignitas. And that's that priority of putting something on the plate. TL has things in mind, and they are already getting them going. BF sword for Piglet is going to be huge in that lane. He's actually going up against the Cutlass now. So those three bolts, Brock and Oh, he's just going for the all in. Alltech has no chance to fight this whatsoever. A few more hits back down. Oh, actually, he's fighting on top of the Hail of Arrows, which completely denies Piglet's movement. And it did mean Alltech could fight it. Calling me a liar. Oh, he's Beautifully coming down done here. Beautifully done to 1v1 that situation just with the Cutlass. Dardock's gonna go down in the end. Alltech comes up with a kill after the entire situation. <laughs> and Alltech gonna get an easy kill as you step wow. on Dardock. Piglet not able to complete the 1v1. They both still had Summoner, so it's hard to tell exactly which way it would have gone, but he couldn't find the Condemn, and Adrian arrived in time to mean that Piglet had to back off. That's slow by Alltech. Super nice, like you said, to deny any positioning for a Condemn. This, Saved his life. Yeah, the, the buy from Alltech here, also pretty smart. He's going for kind of the, the weaker in the all-in type build with the lifesteal. But what it means is you can constantly poke out on Piglet because he has Warlords plus this Cutlass. So his sustain is going to be extremely high. And every time they're landing that poke down on Piglet, they're going to wear him down more and more. And here's Piglet. He gets six immediately going for that all-in. Unable to find the angle, though. Oh. Alltech just staying away from the walls, making sure that Piglet cannot actually get anything done there. Alltech played it so patient too. Just the three blight stack, Halivero, he knew he had a pretty good situation. And then the follow-up. Yeah, and being able to actually pick off that kill on a Dardock. Dardock was certainly going down, but getting it onto your AD carry, always gonna feel really good, because despite the fact that he actually got first blooded, the kill went on to Matt, didn't go on to Piglet. So he's gonna be ahead in gold over his counterpart. And they already sent Piglet back to base which means they're going to get a little bit of a lead. Adrian says, take this. And they get back. So this is much oh. different here for Piglet. He was uh, almost 2-0-2 at this point last game, or at least two kills under his belt. So now they have to wait a little bit to get that catalyst going for him. Or they certainly do. have somebody else be the catalyst, I should say. Matt, a little bit late on that Glitter Lance means also gets the base as well. Uh, he is going to be coming back with a handful of daggers. And Dardock has hit six. We'll have his flash soon. He utilized his first flash to get that first blood. We'll see where he wants to go with his next one because the first time you use that ultimate is so powerful on Gragas. Those ganks are super, super effective. And it's going to have to be some decision-making time. Where does he think he can best snowball his team? Where is it most effective to make these plays? And they may be going for Keen here. He is over the wall. He can look now. One hit, supposed to cast back. They try to get the Parallel Convergence in. They make sure it hits as he gets onto the turret. Flash and heal for himself. That's Dardock going down again. He just came up. And Mickey's gonna have to run out of this situation. Shrimp with a great roam in. Yeah, they go for the play, but Shrimp gets down there. Keen blows the summoners to actually stay safe. And Taylor's gonna take quite a bit of damage on the bot side. They're actually roaming all the way down. Keen still has his ultimate. But as Teal's bot lane backs off, so does Keen and Shrimp. Yep. Alltech stacking up those daggers to get his Blight stacks. Shrimp engaged on with a push from Keen here. Mickey not looking good. Chrono breaks back and then flashes forward. Last hit on the Shrimp could get the three proc again, but cannot Whoa. stay long for Keen. Keen finalizes the kill. Yeah, Mickey getting pretty overconfident there as Keen is around and Shrimp on this Maokai has so much lockdown, holds him in place. Mickey doesn't get any distance with his ultimate, and that means more kills yep. going the way of Keen. And 
This is going to be a very tough game for TL. I'm thinking of this early ocean also. That is so big. Having the additional sustain on these champions. In my opinion, this is the best early dragon there is in the game. Yeah. And when we see Alltech already kind of having that poke sustain advantage over the vein, this is going to help him that much more because he's not going to struggle with his mana nearly as much. Quick pokes. It looks like TL is going to be able to put some damage on this top turret. We'll see this again. He can come up with Storm Raider Surge here to get a bit more power. And, and Mickey Actually, just getting way too confident. Going forward, trying to steal away the camp, but Keen is there to assist, and Shrimp locks him up. Keen knocks him down. They did knock down the top turret, though, during that replay, yep. so good pressure from Dardock, zoning somebody off the turret and kind of cashing in on the work that Lorlo had been able to do from chipping that out earlier, and that certainly does help to even things up quite a bit. Lorlo is going to have a mm -hmm. decent gold advantage for himself off of that, and that can be a way in for TL. They can look to try to set up Nar and put him in a place where he can be split pushing and really getting advantages. Quite a bit of gold to spend for Dignitas. And now looking at Keen pretty much this game. Shrimp was 0-0-3, helping on those assists, but they are getting Keen going in the mid lane. That's something you can always identify with Dignitas is if somebody's going, usually that person can carry, mm -hmm. right? If it's someday, he's going to be going off. Shrimp can do the same and all the way across the board for these guys. It's a sign of a good team, right? Mm -hmm. You can carry from any lane. That's what all the teams are really trying to have because yeah. there's always going to be a place that's best to gank, that's best to go. And if it, you can't go there because you're not confident that that player can actually carry the game, it really does limit you very, very heavily. So Ding Toss team with a lot of options. They're looking to set up this dive. Talia coming down. And Maokai's already here. Ooh, he gets Shrimp on the oh, flash okay, forward. He down. locks them all up. Adrian's there for the heal if they even need it. But they're going to be focusing on to Matt as they get themselves to safety. And now they're going to get another turret. Pretty big commitment, you have to say, though, with Someday coming down also. Mm -hmm. uh, they do knock down the turret. They do get the support kill. Uh, we'll see what else they can get as right now Lorlo is pushing up topside. Mickey and Dardock trying to knock down that Rift Herald. If they can get the second turret, it's certainly well worth it. Can they run top here? No, they're going to actually open up mid. That'll go down much faster. Lorlo has top push. That'll cause some days pressure, and they have free time in mid. So a slight answer. But we see TL's base opened up just a little bit more with these two on the bottom. And Dig may be able to actually get back in time to defend on both sides. Yeah. We'll see if they can actually hold on against this Rift Herald, because Rift Herald goes in. Turret is pretty low, but all Dig Toss is coming up the focus. Matt, remember? He just respawned. Yeah, just respawned. Goes back down. Unfortunate series of events there for the support of Team Liquid. Now the flag and drag just to the left, but the slows are there. The burn is on, and Dardock is not long for this world as he's getting chased down. There's the final hits from Keen. Now 3-0-3 for himself. Full kill participation. Yeah, and the Rift Herald can't quite knock down that turret, so now Digging Toss is going to get mid lane for free because they're rotating yeah. around the map, moving as a team so, so effectively, utilizing this Maokai very well. You find the Flash Twisted Advance. It's so easy to pull off these sorts of plays. Yep. Great setup for the team. They're going to be rewarded very heavily with three quick turrets and now a big gold lead. Large push by Piglet on the bot side. He's not in that position where this can go much farther than the river. We talked about the 1-3-1, but TL has um, a very long way to go before they're that powerful to split Mickey and Piglet. They really do, especially because someday just picked up, you know, kill and an assist. So that's most of the advantage, if not all the advantage, yeah. actually gone for Lorlo. And that was really kind of what they were hoping for. Uh, thankfully, Mickey can actually knock down a mid lane turret, get a little bit something done for himself. And, you know, now that he has a protobelt, if he can get to things like a Lich Bane and Azonias, he can try to be a threat on the side. But here, Shrimp just finds the flash twist advance on Matt, who's kind of trying to get up to Mickey to help him. But doesn't really take the best path. And then Dardock, they're able to chase him down as well. Look at the timing on the J4 ultimate there from Sunday to actually immune the explosive cast yeah. displacement. Uh, very well executed. Shrimp knew too, because it was Matt's flash in the bottom lane from a twisted advance. So he said, guaranteed kill, guaranteed map control. It seems to be what Dignitas triggers off of, but it also creates a bit of hesitation when it seems like they have quite a big lead. Yeah. They may not feel so sure. And we'll see how confident they look going into the later stages of this game as they have a good lead. They played a very strong yeah. early game. This has looked like the best dig toss start to a game, uh, certainly, that we have seen. And we kind of talked about how 
the Maokai ultimate and the Talia ultimate are fairly comparable in what they can do around turrets as far as zoning off of turrets to actually you know, set up these siege situations. And that is going to be very true, especially in this game. You can actually do one, then the other to try to get multiple turrets, or you can actually combine them to leave a wall behind your opponents, then they're trapped in the Maokai ultimate with no way to avoid it. So it's definitely some powerful combinations and synergies there with these two champs who are so good at setting up dives, setting up sieges, and really trying to unlock those turret kills. Ardent Sensor Adrian. No Ardent Sensor Matt. Just yeah, it may come down the line. Right now he's building up that spell thief, getting the vision in, and Moby boots priority for that Lulu movement. I mean, it's actually comical how much more gold Adrian has gotten. Adrian has 1,255 gold from his coin. Take a guess how much is on the spell thieves. 360. So 1,200 versus 360 from those Look support at that items. on a chart even. This is why coin is broken. <laughs> It's so easy to actually collect the gold. Matt has to nonstop put himself in danger to actually get these hits off. And now that he's behind, he can't actually get the autos, get the spells off to collect the spell thieves gold very efficiently. So Adrian, with this super early buy, means he's at a very fast and all that it's half, sensor. It's half coin, man. Yeah. Just half coin. I mean, the funniest part about it is because of the turret gold and the fact that he's getting an insane amount of income from the coin, he almost has as much gold as the opposing AD carry. Like, he's only a little bit behind where Piglet is. And Piglet has 140 CS. You know, like, that's that's absurd. And that's the power of the coin. It's the power of cheese. Nah, just, that, was, that was not necessary. Six to one, 18 minutes in. Game three here between TL and Team Ding to Toss. Back and forth. A lot of turrets just got dropped, so we had a spike in some of the items. Who's going to be able to use those first? as they're not really aware of that front end damage that's going to come out, but they are going to have to assess it very fast as it comes in. Proto Belt for Mickey, he's gonna be very slippery in these fights, but he doesn't have two completed items just yet. I think we're waiting on that for just about everybody. Yeah, Mickey looking to go towards that Zonia's, which will give mm -hmm. us a more team fight presence. The combination of the Zonia's in with your ultimate on Echo is very, very powerful because it takes a little time for that ghost to actually catch up where you are. Yeah. You can dive in, use Zonia's, the ghost catches up, then you can kind of ultimate on top of yourself for that big burst, uh, which can be a pretty powerful combo. Slow moving, safety for Piglet on the bot side. Two member team of Dardock and Mickey in the middle. Gonna leave Lorlo off by himself. He sees the two member team of Dignitas trying to take him out and Shrimp and Keen, but he gets himself to safety. This is pressure to bot now, though. They know three members are top for dig. Yeah, they're gonna look for the dive here. Dardock is behind someday. We'll see if they can execute this and get another turret. Quick nope. shield. Just throws down the W. He knows it's gonna be all right. The turret's there, but I don't even think they can get this. I mean, the rest of Dignitas is almost here. They're gonna go for the dive now, but someday should be fine with Jana almost here. I was gonna say Dardock's focus is on to someday. Just making sure he can't get the engage on. Actually played very nicely so far. Adrian just out of range for the Zephyr. Gets it onto Mickey, but it's gonna be the dive and the belt for safety, as we said before. So no chase to be had. Team Liquid gets out safe. Yeah, well done though by Team Liquid. They get the turret, they get the disengage, not having to really give up much of anything there. So that is pretty good for them. And they have bought a little bit of time for Lorlo up on the top side, but three-man squad looking up for him. He doesn't have vision. And he could get cut off by the Weaver's Wall. They're pinging around where he is, and I think oh. he's dead. They can't see me in here. Dead man walking, Riv. Who gets it? They give it to Keen. 4-0-3. Why not? He is actually quite big. They're going to maybe even go over towards the Baron at this point. They actually have uh, the ability to tank it up for quite a long time with Maokai in the Passa, but instead, doing it's a little bit too early, just go straight over to this blue, take this away for Keen, and then they do still have the ability to threaten that Baron, or at least just continue to pressure these turrets. Blue for Keen now, that's perfect. He was actually depleted on mana, and they're also starting to deny resources for Mickey. He won't completely need that blue, but it will help if these fights go anything extended. Yeah, it's a good call because Keen actually does need the mana regen a lot. Yeah. Uh, since he didn't go for a Mel Melanomicon, he went for Banshee's Veil, Leandries, things that do not actually give you mana, do not give you that mana regen. Uh, so he is going to be more reliant Holy on that blue, but moly. look how fast they killed this. It's gone. I blinked. Oh, I think Dardock did too. Cataclysm comes down, closes oh, his eyes, and wishes for, for the best. Mickey goes back, 
Still a Zanya's and a belt to be used here, but he does not have a target. Alltech flashes forward, chain of corruption goes on, and he tries to solo out the mid laner, finding the shots, and there's a double kill for Alltech. Looking for the triple kill. That's gonna be the third one for Keen as they start moving on to the rest of the members of Team Liquid. Lorlo and Dardock are off the triple now. For Alltech, Keen can make it a full house, but they can't find Lorlo. Yeah, the wheels have fallen off here for TL. Dignitas, the 21 minute Baron just gets absolutely crushed, and now they have the minions pushing up here with the Baron. Alltech with the top, they're gonna find the pick. He got the hop out. That's gonna bring Shrimp a little farther than he wanted, but they also trigger the ultimate onto Lorlo, so he doesn't have a chance to let that rest. They're moving on to the inhibitor turrets. Baron of Dignitas moving into the base. Gonna knock down this inhibitor turret. We'll see if they stay around for the inhibitor. They decide to call for a retreat because these guys are gonna have a lot of gold in their pockets. There's actually, you know, 8,000 plus, almost 10,000 gold in there. They secure that Baron. Someday goes for the fight. Nice engage from Mickey, but there's no real follow-up because no one is in position to actually get in there. Orlo was not in spot, and then Piglet trying to get something done here onto Shrimp, but there is a twisted advance, knocking him back into the team, straight into the exhaust, and down goes Vayne. Oh Not my you can do there. word. Alltech's getting up to 2.2 attack speed with his passive when taking out units. That's absolutely absurd. absurd. A 2.5 is like the highest, so he is going They're crazy. Pretty quick with them arrows. Yes, incredibly fast. We saw that help him take out Mickey just a second ago, able to step shoot, step shoot faster than Mickey could zone. TL are looking for a pick here. We'll see if they can actually pull it off as they're hanging around this blue buff, but... Oh, they actually find someday. Can they chase him down? Just out of the parallel convergence, able to use the cataclysm as a way to get out of the situation, but it leaves Keen they now in the dust. Keen's gonna have to get himself to safety, can start to skir skirt around, rather. That passive wall move, a hit. Now that's Matt going down immediately. Piglet's too far out of the fight to really help. Tries to go for the dodges, but too much ground is weaved by Keen, and he works down Piglet. Yeah, Delia's so strong in these moving fights because she constantly has new ground yep. for the Q, throwing out the volleys, and looks like they may just be able to push down here. We'll see if TL can actually mount a defense. They're already on the Nexus turrets. Slow and steady wins the race for Dignitas here. Getting those turrets, getting a bit of map control, an uncontested Baron, and they continue to use that now. One quarter of it left as they're inside the base of Dignitas sub 25 minutes. I'm sorry, Team Liquid sub 25 minutes. Yeah, Dignitas, they shove up the top wave as well. Someday doing a good job prepping that up, and they yeah. will dock down another inhibitor turret. Go straight for this inhibitor. TL looking for the play. Lorlo, very nice double sweep on the team. Three members of Dignitas get to corner him in, though, and deliver the damage. First kill to Keen. Mickey and the Zanyas has the chrono break to get himself out, but not enough time to pull the trigger. Shrimp on to now Piglet, who goes down. Twisted advance. Darda gets bounced around, and Matt finds himself safety on the fountain as Dignitas looks to take down the Nexus turrets. They're going to do it, and Dignitas with the most convincing game here, save for game number three. Yep. Good way to close this one out, give them some confidence going into playoffs, and they are going to be going up against Cloud9. It's going to be 17 to 1 as Dignitas puts the final touches on this. They're going to go ahead and dive that on the fountain. Adrian gets the kill as he goes down. Would you believe it? Dignitas with the victory over Team Liquid. Adrian looking pretty happy with himself, and as he should be. <laughs> just, just, just because coin is, is so funny, I checked one more time. So 2,300 gold earned on the coin in a 25 minute game, like compared to the about 600 from Matt. So pretty crazy yeah. how much he actually got out of this. And I mean, Adrian was so strong at enabling his team and his teammates in these fights because of the power coming out from the Janna Shielding, already had his redemption, his art and sensor so early on yeah. in the game. Like, it's almost like he's another you know, laner. It's almost like a top lane Janna or something. He has top, so much gold. Right, on top of the gold and everything you got from well from the uh, assists, there's three items on Adrian compared to Sightstone on Matt and a piece together for the next one. So it becomes that much harder as well when your support can offer the utility that your AD carry needs, that your mid lane needs, that other lanes need. You just are able to provide so much. And Dignitas do find that win. Another game three though for themselves mm -hmm. as they kind of right that ship in being able to take the early game that quick. Because right when they get when they get the game, they seem to start start working their way towards the Nexus right away. 
Yeah, they just don't seem to be able to really have that consistency to to dominate these teams, to shut out yeah. teams 2-0, you know, when they are fighting against the lower teams in the standings. But they do come away with the victories, and they are turning in a very impressive season for themselves. This is the best form Dignitas has had in <laughs> quite a long time. The Dig Digs for Dignitas. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. There he is. Shrimp says, gum is done for this one. No longer to choose his victory gum. I'll need a new piece next time. <laughs> but as well for Team Liquid, looking great as they make their way into what will be the promotion tournament with a the squad. They're actually trying to kind of sure up and find a way to get right through uh, all shiny and nice. I was just like, what's a rainbow? All, all rainbow colors, but I couldn't figure out the saying. I mean, it's certainly it's that kind of day. There's some positives to take away from the series. Yeah. They're not going to be too happy with this last game as it was pretty brutal. For but sure. Game number two, they win. Game number one, they play Dignitas pretty even for about 20 minutes. And Dignitas is at a much higher level than the teams that they would be facing in the promotion tournament. So, yeah. you know, TL, for them, it's it's back to the grind. Get practicing. Get working on this team, on this five-man unit. If this is your squad, they need to be in the best possible shape that they can be for that promotion tournament. And for Dignitas, it's looking ahead to Cloud9. They obviously have Very true. their own ideas on, on how best to play the game, how best to play the meta, and it differs from some of the other teams. So when you're going into these playoff matchups, that can be more heavily targeted by opponents, right? So sometimes you need to prepare something a little bit extra. All right, so for more on that win, we are going to check in with Avali and Team Dignitas' mid-split acquisition, Alltech. Thanks, guys. Great cast on the day. I am here with Alltech. First of all, congratulations on your victory. I want to ask, Dignitas has had a lot of roster changes and players moving throughout the split. How would you describe the team's identity in terms of play style? I think when I first joined the team, we didn't do really well, and we kind of needed like a change to happen, and we kind of just brought me and Adrian in together, and then we kind of we worked really well because we played a lot before together, and with I guess with our like chemistry, we like were able to do really well in the bot lane, which enabled like, you know, it draw it drew more like jungle pressure bottom. Then someday can do more and King can do more. So I think that we we're able to draw a lot of pressure, and that's what got us ahead a lot of times. Well, you mentioned you you were looking for a change to make within the team. Was there a influencer on that, or was it the patch, or? Oh uh, well, I I just we just didn't really work out that well. Um, but once we put Adrian in, it like kind of just clicked. It, like everything, like people, I guess we were doing really well with him, and people were just like, "Oh shit," you know, like we're 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 starting to get better. Well, you guys play Cloud Nine in the playoffs. Now I have to ask you, like, how are you and the team going to approach Cloud Nine? How are you going to stop that train? Uh, well, first of all, Cloud Nine is when you look at it, they're like Jensen's like just doing really well. He's like he hasn't died, so I think like one of the biggest I guess concerns I have is like, will we be able to shut him down? So I think maybe we'll try to work around that. But I think uh, in terms of every other role, I think we're able to maybe get some leads or do well against them. Take down Jensen, take home the victory. Well, Alltech, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. And we're going to throw it back over to our casters. Thank you very much, Avali. Great to hear from Alltech as those guys are getting themselves prepared. They also know the force that has, has been Jensen in the mid lane. I know you had a tweet earlier in the week uh, that's saying this guy may be losing games, but 11 1, 10 0. These. And Cloud9 has tough. not lost in a while. Yeah. They, yeah. they are on a five yeah. series winning streak. Crazy. I believe they're playing first series on the other stream, so they may actually be on a six game winning streak. I don't yet know. Uh, right. But, I mean, I think it was something like. Uh, I mean, these aren't the exact numbers, but something like 62, 3, and 27, I believe, uh, is around Jensen's score over the last six games. That's crazy. It's, it's actually absurd how well he is playing, and Dignitas is right to start preparing for him now. They are. Well, they get a little of that preparation today within this game. We'll jump right back into it with some replays. 21 minutes in, Dignitas showing where they may be able to take those games against C9, and the Baron fights have been great for them. Yeah, and this was such a good last game for Dignitas. Extremely decisive. <laughs> they rush down the Baron. They turn for the fight, and it's just so hard for TL to really be able to compete in this fight from this spot, right? You know, Piglet gets rooted up, gets locked down, exhausted, taken out, and 
Matt has no choice but to do a little dance while he watches his <laughs> team lose the game. Everybody trying to make their way to safety, but it's really how can we get to Piglet? And instead of TL being on the front line of engaging, that first shot from Piglet being what changed Dignitas' mind, we talked about it being the other way around and you getting to choose your priority target. Yeah, exactly. Having that engage really does set the pace of the game. And, you know, from game two to game three, the biggest difference is the vein never really got going, right? right? They weren't able to actually find those early plays. Teal was so effective in the early game with Dardock especially, moving around the map, making so many things happen and snowballing those lanes. But despite the fact that Dardock had a great first gank down on the bot side, it never really turned into anything. Right. And Dignitas was so consistent in this game, playing extremely intelligently across the map, sieging up turrets, taking objectives, taking over vision. And I think that this is really a strong game for them. And somebody that was able to really shine through for Dignitas was keen on that Talia once again, holding his ground. And as we said before, it can always be a member of Dignitas to carry. This time it's keen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this guy has been so on point for them this season. Finds a nice seismic shove on Dardock, turning around a gank there, able to get that kill. And then Mickey getting a bit too aggressive. And Mickey had a pretty rough game, honestly. It gets locked up here by Shrimp. They're able to chase him down, take him out. Keen, I think, has a lot to be proud of with his Talia play. Yeah. You know, both of his games, he does pick up player of the game as he runs the Talia today. And certainly deservedly so. I think he, he uses this champion so incredibly well, like how he's actually positioning himself, how he's utilizing the work ground, moving around in the team fights to always find the right spot to get the maximum amount of damage out. And, and even his builds were super intelligent. Once he had a lead, he actually forgoes the Morellos, goes yeah. straight into Swifty Boots for positioning and, and gets the Leandries and then goes into the bench still. So I think he's playing really well by all, all measures. Always of think, always thinking of what can be the next. And the thing is, too, is he can fly under the radar in games, and you don't, you won't worry about him. That's the kind of the thing about Dignitas. Is someday can do that too. But the flyer under the radar, he kind of was right in front yeah. of the radar. This Look at game. the damage. I mean, definitely <laughs> noticing him this game. Almost twenty-one thousand damage put out yeah. here by Keen compared to the six point seven K of Mickey. Keen was massive and really does deserve the accolades and the credit that he is receiving. Got to be feeling pretty good with that mid lane play and Dignitas coming up with another victory. We've got another series coming your way. FlyQuest and Phoenix One face off in a quest to avoid the promotion tournament. As we go to commercial, we have a look at Pentakill's latest music video for the track Mortal Reminder. Enjoy.